idea of this pleasant stream is my secret fishing spot. But really, it's a place you should know all about. This is Pleasant Valley. And the story of what happened here and to this stream has set the stage for improving water quality in streams across America. Critical questions. What's needed are rivers. How can science offer solutions? What stakeholders can make a difference? Studies done by DNR in conjunction with EPA collect enough data to show that uh, the main impairment with the stream was sediment coming into the stream from agricultural lands. We actually looked for a watershed of this size um, to do this pilot study because it's small enough that we could see an effect and it's a little bit large enough that we're not just measuring one particular farm. So it was just the right size at about 20 square miles. This particular watershed was a case study. It was a model to determine that if farmers applied practices on their cropland, to their pastureland, to the farmstead, would it make a difference on the water quality? It takes different stakeholders to form a plan and then to make it happen. We had just an amazing team from all sorts of agencies of both government and then also nonprofits. So the Nature Conservancy played a really key role in bringing together all the, the agencies and with the farmers and then also it had a research component to it. As you'd expect, computer science also played a vital role in all this. But it wasn't just a snap. It was actually something called SNAP Plus. The SNAP Plus program, which is a standard nutrient management planning program, um, the software was used for developing the plan, identifying where the hotspots were, and determining what kind of practices would reduce phosphorus losses in those hotspots. Then we look at the dissolved phosphorus, and the dissolved phosphorus comes from the soil, and then it can also come from fertilizers and manures or other field amendments that are sitting on the surface of the soil. And so the more phosphorus is there, the more that's gonna be lost in runoff. What do you think could be the problems here? See this rainstorm that's going on out here? If this was in April or early May, it, we could have severe erosion, water would run off carrying the soil and the associated nutrients. And some of those nutrients do attach themselves to the soil particles. So as the soil particle goes, so do those nutrients. And with this type of rain can wash right off the field. There are certain organisms and certain types of fish can only tolerate like 60 degree water temps. If we get 70 or 80 degree water temps in here because of excessive sediment, nutrients in the stream, those fish die. It's been said that on one spring day with steady rainfall, this watershed exports about 300 pounds of phosphorus. Though that sounds like a lot, it's actually 200 pounds less than before the conservation practices were put in place. And that extra 200 pounds of phosphorus is no longer over fertilizing the river and potentially producing 100,000 pounds of algae in downstream waters. Woohoo for water quality and yeehaw for my fishing prospects. Some of the science that helped decode the changes in water quality here happened inside that thing. This looks like it might have something cold to drink on a nice hot summer afternoon, but actually it just has stream water in it. This is a automated sampler. What's really good about this is that it runs uh, night and day, all times of the season. About 80% of the phosphorus load happens on only about 10 days out of all the 365 days in a year. So having this in, it allows us to be able to capture those events and, and really measure them well. This is called a bottom viewer and it allows us to look down through the water and we can see what the bottom looks like. It has gravel in the center, which is really good for the trout. And then if I get over to the sides, I start to pick up some of the silt. 
And I'm also seeing some rocks over to the sides put in about 10 years ago to help control bank erosion. There's quite a bit of aquatic plants in here that fish and, and other critters can hide in underneath them. I'm going to take a sample of the soft sediment in the channel and we do this up and down the river to get a, an idea of how much soft sediment there is and what the concentration of phosphorus is in it. Chemistry of this is what we can't see and phosphorus in particular travels along with sediment so the two kind of go along uh, together in these systems so that's why it's so important to measure sediment that accumulates on the bottom. Want to see what happens when stakeholders take ownership of solutions? The other thing that was really key with the study was uh, that the farmers were involved from the start. And the uh, Dane County um, and the conservation has played a really key role. And this was a voluntary program for farmers. So without the farmers' involvement with this, we wouldn't have had practices applied to the field because it's the farmer who operates and manages the land. A lot of people contributed to the reduction of that phosphorus, but the ones who made a direct impact on the stream were the same ones farming those slopes along this watershed. They kind of came to us because we are a dairy farm and our phosphorus levels in our soil were one of the higher ones in the township. Well, they wanted us to actually do a little more minimum tillage, no tillage. But when you're part of the environment, you know some of it is coming from here. You're aware of it. I mean, we're not naive to think that it's not. Well, we had soil samples that showed that our phosphor levels were on the high side. And now with the new watershed project, some of the newer things we implemented just enhanced some of the early things we've been doing for 50 years. So we grew up with conservation on our mind. So it's been probably about 50 years this farm's been contour farming, which was early erosion control back in the 60s. When you talk about that peak flush time in the spring when the snow is melting, we definitely try to stay off the more sloped ground and try to stay on more of the flat ground when we do the manure. We're spreading it out throughout a year's time, so it minimizes any chance of more of it getting into the river system. But what we're doing probably better now is concentrating is on doing more of the no-till system leaving more residue on the ground so the, so the manure actually has a better chance to adhere to the particles. We're also implementing some winter rye. does allow us to have more of a cover crop on some of the steeper soils. It holds that soil in and place And absorbs better. some of the phosphorus into it. Eats up the phosphorus. So we're double cropping so you get two ways to eat the phosphorus versus one. Farmers always have a sense of stewardship. They're attached to the land. They're attached to the water. They don't want to see the soil washing off their fields. And we couldn't have done it without that partnership. Preliminary results are showing that we're seeing a 40% reduction in phosphorus and aquatic biology in the stream has improved. So the, the fisheries and then also what the fish eat, which is why the DNR is looking at taking the stream off the impaired list. If there's one thing that we've learned from this whole study was the targeted approach uh, works and it works pretty quickly in these smaller 20 square mile watersheds. What's so exciting about this project is that it is repeatable and a bonus is now that it can work in other places. When people look at the stream and the trout in it, this whole watershed was so successful because of the partnership the bond that not only the farmers who are the land managers, but also from various agency groups and private organizations, all were stakeholders in this watershed. What happened here in Pleasant Valley proves that watersheds like this all across the country can be scientifically evaluated and, most importantly, duplicated with the success of partnerships, resulting in cleaner, quality water for all of us to enjoy. So really, it's a roadmap to improving water quality wherever you live.